Hello everyone, my name is Karina Vernoza. I'm Maria Loreto. And I'm Richard Sanko. We're Team 17, and this is a Packaging Machine Gearbox. For our project, we were given the design parameters to design a gearbox that could transmit 10 horsepower while reducing the speed from 10,020 RPMs to 60. The input and output shafts had to be parallel and aligned to a minimum offset. They also had to rotate in the same direction. Uh, we had to design a gearbox for a high precision application that could endure light shocks and operate at room temperature. This had to be done while keeping the gearbox to a lowest weight and volume. Uh, however, the cost was not a critical parameter. The application that we thought best fit our design requirements was a conveyor belt. This conveyor belt is used as a speed reducer that converts the high torque into a low speed. Our gearbox is a speed reducer, which means that the input speed is much greater than the output speed. Um, several different kinds of speed reducers that we researched were smaller ones, such as fans and servo motors, to much larger and complex ones that fit into the automotive and the packaging machinery applications. Our conceptual design first looked at helical gears due to the high precision and accuracy. Now, helical gears would and does and do have many more steps and would cause the gear train to be much longer. Now, due to the high precision and due to the high accuracy, there's going to be much more stress on these shafts, and thus more bearings will be used. Helical gears are there then not used because it's high weight, even though it has a low volume, as seen in this conceptual design. Here is our final conceptual design. Here is the SOLIDWORKS rendering. It consists of four gears, one gear used twice of 66 teeth, which is a larger gear, and two smaller gears of 15 and 16 teeth. Now, these are we use cast iron and steel for both of these gears, respectively. And we found that these gears were spur gears to be still accurate, not as accurate as helical, but they did the job. We found an RPM of 63 that was reduced to 61 or 60, right around our desired goal rate, and thus was a successful automation. Seen here in our cost estimate, we have a breakdown of the gears, bearing, and shafts, as well as the screws for the gearbox. We see the cost of the 66 teeth gear is most expensive, ranging about $500 each, thus having a total cost of $1,600. Our smaller gears are about 100, and the bearings also 100. We use about six bearings total, four inside the gearbox and two outside. For maintenance, since our gearbox is made up of spur gears, the synthetic gear oil lubricant is best for this application. It is best because you can use it to improve thermal and oxidation stability, which would give it a longer life, making the service factor a lot longer as well. It is resistant to creation of residue and deposits at the high temperatures that it might run at. And another maintenance application would be the replacements of the gears. That would be every six months, as well as checking the alignment of the gears, which would be about every month or so. In conclusion, most of the goals were achieved with the spur gear enclosed um, gearbox that we've created. Uh, we got it to the high precision that it needed to be. The input and output shafts were aligned with a bit of offset and they were parallel. The input was also much greater than the output, which is what makes it the speed reducer that we needed to be. Um, we got it to be at a very low volume, which is good, but because of the gear selection and um, the limitations that we had from the Boston Gear Catalog with the 10 HP parameter, we could only get it to a certain weight, which was not the ideal weight, but it was much lower than it would have been with a longer gear train.